everyone, welcome to First Kids City Online. I'm Nathan. And I'm Emily. We are so excited to worship with you and your entire family. Today, we will be praising God together, diving into God's Word, and having some fun as well. If you have bread and juice available for our time of communion, go ahead and get it ready. If you don't have bread or juice, don't worry about it. Whatever you have in your kitchen will be just fine. We will take the Lord's Supper together in just a few minutes. Right now, let's take a quick look at what we're studying this month in First Kid City. Our theme this month is Jam Session. Everyone has a part to play. God didn't create us to be by ourselves all the time. We need other people in our lives. When we have good friends, we're able to grow closer to Jesus together. At First Kid City, we study a life app every month. A life app is what God is doing in you to change the world around you. And this month, our life app is cooperation, working together to do more than you could do alone. When we have community, a Christ-centered group of friends, God can use all of us to spread His love. Let's say you want to study God's Word more, but you're having some trouble. Sometimes it's hard to focus and understand some of the stories in the Bible. Ask your friends for help. Maybe they have the same questions and you can work together to study scripture. Another big thing we'd love to do at First Kids City is memorize God's Word. This month we're studying Ecclesiastes 4 9. Let's read it together. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Great job, everyone. Spend some time today with your parents coming up with motions to help you memorize this verse. Are you ready for what's next? Get your game face on because it's game time. Hi, guys. Welcome to game time. I'm Sydney. And I'm Josh. And today we're playing Bite the Bag. Woo! Okay, so how you play this game, you're going to need a brown paper bag and a friend or family <laughs> to play it with. So you're going to set the bag on the ground. And you might want to start on them a little, just in case you guys fall or something. Um, but you're going to stand on one foot, and you're going to want to go down and try to bite the bag and bring it back up. Okay? You guys ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, you know Oh! No way! <laughs> okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Yeah! Dang it! I should do that. Yeah! <laughs> All right, um, you guys were probably a lot better than I was. So if you guys have videos or pictures, send them here. <laughs> and are you ready for worship? Yeah! Let's do it. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get ready to worship. You spoke one word and the dark became light. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. You spoke my name and my heart came to life. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. I wanna sing about it, I wanna scream and shout it.
time of worship today by taking communion. If you don't have your bread and juice ready or whatever you have available, go ahead and prepare that right now. For thousands of years, God's people have gathered together to take a communion meal. During communion, it's important that we remember to do two things, remember and celebrate. On the night before Jesus was arrested, he gathered his disciples together for the Passover meal. But as they were eating, he did something a little out of the ordinary. He took some unleavened bread, broke it into a bunch of pieces, and passed it out to his friends. He told them the bread was his body, and they should eat it in remembrance of him. Then he took a cup and told them this was his blood of the covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. This seems kind of odd, but Jesus was starting a new revolution. On the day when Jewish people gathered together, to celebrate and remember their escape from slavery at the hands of the Egyptians, Jesus was starting a new day, a day when all people would be free from the slavery of sin and death. In a few short hours, Jesus would be arrested and crucified. He would get the punishment for the sins that we committed. It was a terrible thing, but because of what Jesus did, we no longer have to be separated from God. We are free to live with him wholly and completely. We remember the life that Jesus led, how he never sinned, his amazing teachings and miracles, and we celebrate how he died for our sins and three days later rose again in the resurrection, defeating sin and death forever. And all of God's people to this day gather together to share this meal as one family. If you would like to remember and celebrate Jesus with us today, we invite you to take communion at home right now. One of the most important things you can do to love Jesus is to love God's heart. Here at First Kids City, that's just how we talk about prayer. Prayer is simply sharing your heart with God and letting Him share His heart with you. It's like talking to a close friend or a relative. Today, we are going to pray together as a family. I'm going to say the prayer for us, and when I'm finished, we will all say amen together, which means I agree. I encourage you to get into a posture of prayer at home right now. The position of our bodies often reflects the position of our hearts toward God. So feel free to get down on your knees, lay down on the floor, stand with your hands reaching toward God, or even just fold your hands and close your eyes. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, today we come before you in worship, and we thank you for everyone tuning in today, worshiping with us. We ask your blessing be on all of us as we dive into your word today. Open our eyes to your truth, and may we learn to love like Jesus. And all God's kids say, Amen. Now, let's get ready to hear a message from God's Word. Hey, everybody! My name is Haley, and as you can see, I love music! And I mean all kinds of music. Rock music. Country music. Hip hop. I love it all. But my favorite kind of music is the kind that involves cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Take an orchestra. For example, it takes all kinds of cooperation for an orchestra to come together. They've got strings. 
woodwinds, brass, and of course, percussion. By themselves, those instruments sound just fine. But when they all play together, they really make some noise. And music isn't the only place where cooperation makes a difference. Cooperation shows up in sports, at school, at home, and as we'll see in today's story, in tent building. Really, really, really big tent building. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Exodus. Though the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years, God had led them to freedom in the desert, and now they had to build new lives and a new place where God could live among them. So God called out to their leader, Moses. Come up to me on the mountain. A thick cloud covered the mountain as God spoke with Moses. Tell the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. God gave Moses many rules and laws that would help keep the people safe, but God gave the most detailed instructions for something very special. Have them make a sacred tent for me. I will live among them. Make the holy tent and everything that belongs to it exactly like the pattern I will show you. Okay, ready, taking notes. Make ten curtains out of finely twisted linen with blue, purple, and bright red yarn. Sew cherubim into the pattern. The curtains must be 42 feet long and six feet wide. Make loops out of blue strips. Ugh, Moses' head must have spun as God gave him very complicated blueprints for a beautiful tent, uh, for all the things that would go inside the tent, and for the elaborate robes the priests would wear. Curtains, uh, lampstands, bowls, uh, altars, incense, robes. God, I, I don't even know where to start. God knew Moses couldn't take on this huge job alone. In fact, God already had it covered. Phew! After Moses had heard all of God's instructions, he came down the mountain and told his assistant, Joshua, Gather all the people. On it. God is going to make a home right here among us. We'll build an epic, amazing, ginormous tent for God. Who wants to volunteer? Maybe you should be a little more specific. Uh, good point. Uh, one thing at a time. Uh, Aaron? Moses pointed out his brother standing near the front. Right here! God has chosen you and your sons to serve as priests in the sacred tent. Oh, we're honored, but, oh, oh well, uh, we need the tent first. Uh, exactly. We'll need a skilled craftsman to head up the whole project. Moses looked out over the crowd. Bezalel, son of Uri. The name spread through the vast crowd, and in moments, a young man with bright eyes and strong hands leapt off a rock and came forward. Bezalel, son of Uri, tribe of Judah, at your service. God has chosen you to lead everyone crafting the holy tent. Wow. Okay. Uh, gonna need half a second here. Uh, don't worry. God's filled you with his spirit, with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, all kinds of skill. You're talking about me? Can you make beautiful patterns in gold, silver, and bronze? Well, yes. Can you cut and set stones? Yep. Work with wood? Absolutely. Craft as if Pinterest were already a thing? Theoretically, yes. God will give you all the help you need, starting with uh, a holy ab. Another man stepped up, smile lines crinkling his face. Hey, man, that's me. 
God also had chosen you and given you special skill in all kinds of crafts. Oh, totally rare. And to top it off, God has given both of you the ability to teach others everything you know. All right, we're so on it. We'll train up an entire team. <laughs> there was just one catch. We need to lay in supplies. Yeah, anyone seen a house depot? How about a tents to go? God will take care of it. Uh, uh, we, we need everyone to help. Please bring an offering for the Lord from what you have. Quickly, people came forward to give to the work of the holy tent. Uh, take these gold earrings and this necklace. I can haul in loads of acacia wood on my donkey. I've been saving this purple yarn. I picked the olives for this olive oil. In fact, the people had brought so much, the workers couldn't use it all. Stop! Please, we have more than enough. So under the guidance of Bezalel and Oholiab, a team of men and women stepped up to create the tent. They carved tables and altars and curtain bases. They crafted golden lampstands and bronze bowls. They spun and wove yards and yards of bright colored linen curtains. They sewed special robes for the priests and compounded beautiful <sighs> incense to burn on the altar. At last, the tent of meeting was complete. Moses and all the people gathered together once more. You have done the work just as God commanded. May God bless you all. When everything was finally in place and the priests were ready, a cloud covered the tent and it filled with the glory of God that everyone could see. When the Israelites were wandering in the desert, God asked them to build a big tent. A tent we now call the tabernacle, where people could worship God and where God could live. Oops, you heard that right. God wanted to live with the Israelites in the desert inside of a big traveling tent. And God wanted the people to work together to make it. So. They needed people with all kinds of different gifts. Designers, people who could sew, people who could work with stone and fine metals. Plus, they needed teachers who could train people how to do all of those things. God knew that if they all worked together, they could make something incredible. God has always been big on cooperation. Think of Jesus. He could do so much on his own. He could work miracles, and yet, he chose to work together with a unique group of 12 disciples as he traveled and he taught. God wanted them to work together. And guess what? God wants us to work together too. You see, we are all unique. We all have things we're good at. We could be good at sports or good at math or good at coming up with stories. We could be hard workers or good at solving problems and by ourselves, we could do just fine. But when we work together, when we use our gifts with the gifts of other people, then we can really make some noise. So here's the one thing to remember today. God wants us to work together. Working together helps us get things done faster. It helps us get things done better. Plus, it helps us to grow the relationships with the people all around us. And that is a good thing. Thought we could use a pig finish. <laughs> I'll see you next time! Thanks so much for joining us on First Kid City Online. You're always welcome to join us for live services happening every Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m. And we would love to hear from you. If you have any great pictures or videos of your family participating in worship or our game time, please send them to us down below. And don't forget, Sunday Fun Day is this month. Sunday Fun Day happens every fifth Sunday. We go all out to create a special weekend experience here at First Church. There will be donuts, prizes, and live teaching. It's a great day to invite friends or attend your first in-person Sunday service. And that's all for us today. Be sure to like and share this video with your friends. Bye.